All right, welcome to our scat basics video. Today we're just gonna go over the shoulder, how it moves, a little bit of the anatomy of it, and um, how it's used, basically. Um, let's get right into it. What do we use our shoulder for, Heather? Uh, in daily life, we use our shoulder for lots of things. Washing our dishes, walking our dog, fastening our seatbelt in our car, reaching behind us to get something out of our car, um, pushing open big doors, pushing ourselves off of our seats. Definitely a lot of things that we don't think about all the time. Yeah. And in the gym, I mean, most common things would be pressing weight, pulling weight, horizontally, vertically, um, plank positions in planks, in, excuse me, in um, exercise. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then what type of joint would you say the, the shoulder is? The shoulder is a ball and socket joint. Um, the ball of the joint is the humerus head, and the socket is the actual scapula, which is kind of interesting. Um, it also connects to the, um, your clavicle. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, being a ball and socket joint, it has a lot of stability. It has a lot of uh, degrees of freedom and a lot of range of motion. Um, so we see the problem with the shoulder being a big um, joint that causes problems because you have such a freely way of moving that if you interrupt that somehow a little bit, it causes a big dysfunction, right? Um, so a couple of the muscles that go into the shoulder joint. You want to go over that? Yeah. Sure. Um, the shoulder joint, your most major muscles would be your traps that run down the center of your back, um, your lats that run under your armpits down into your waist, um, your triceps on the back of your arms, your, um, all of your rotator cuff muscles, which are your subscap, your um, supraspinatus, your infraspinatus, your teres minor, um, and then you also have some pec... Did I miss one? No. No. That's good. And then you also have pec minor. Pec minor, pec major. You have your rhomboids too. Ah, uh, rhomboids um, as well. There's a lot of things that attach, con connect, either start at the, the scap or they connect to the scap. And affect um, the way it moves. Yeah, and affect a lot of the way it moves. Mm -hmm. um, so we're always thinking about that as we're going into the next one is the six ways the scapula move, right? Yeah. Um, so there's six ways the scapula move. Go ahead and face that way for me. Um, go ahead and hands in front of you. So we always try to test people on these when we start, but I'm gonna show you guys first what it means. We have retraction. So retraction of the scapula is when the shoulders are pulling together towards the midline of the back. And then we have protraction is when the shoulders are pulling away from each other towards away from the midline of the, of the back. Then we have hands overhead. We have upward rotation, which is where the shoulders are going up. And then the only way most of the time the shoulders can go up is to slightly rotate. We see that a problem in a lot of um, tight scaps is not being able to do this movement correctly. And then you have downward rotation, which is the same thing, but pulling it down so it goes back to the middle. And then you have, go ahead and go back down. And then you have elevation, which is basically a shrug, where the shoulder, instead of rotating up, it moves straight up, with the both shoulders move straight up. And then we have depression, which is going straight down, right? So we have retraction, protraction, ele um, upper rotation, downward rotation, elevation, and depression. Um, Definitely things you want to know. Yeah, for sure. Um, we test clients out all the time like this. We'll go over it a little bit more in the in-depth session. Um, but a lot of the good ways to do it is to put your hand behind the shoulder and see if the scapula is moving. If they have a tight-fitting shirt, you can also see if the scapula is moving. A lot of times if it doesn't move, that, that is causing a problem, right? Um, some of the things that we see of people that coming in is frozen shoulders. Um, go ahead. What else do we see? Uh, you see inflammation issues such as bursitis of the joint or um, tendonitis of the joint. Um, both issues you can see in any joint, but really common in the shoulder. That's a lot of overuse, or it could be like a pinching of some sort. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we see a lot is instability of the scap, which would be a wing of scapula. Uh, Heather has a big problem with this, so we always work on that. So if you picture a wing of scapula, if I put my hand on her shirt, you see how much this protrudes. She's not retracting, that's just the scapula working. Um, that's a big problem for not only her, for a lot of people. And a lot of times we fix that by trying to just stabilize it through different planks, different ways of putting the shoulder in that position or making it move in a different position, but still staying without winging, right? Without pulling it from, from the midline of the body. Um, what are ways that we work with, like if I have pain doing something? So sometimes when we have pain, we always try to avoid pain or we always try to make the client understand um, what is pain? Is it soreness or is it pain, pain? When we first get a client, we want to make sure that we both, the coach and the client, understand what pain is and what soreness is. We tend to get a lot of clients with both. Um, so we can always work around pain, but if it's sore, we got to make them understand sometimes this happens and 
as long as we move a little bit, it decreases that soreness. Um, we deal a lot with this with stretches. Um, we, we do different types of stretches to open up the shoulder. A lot of times the pecs are really tight, especially when people work at a desk so much, they're rounded forward. So we tend to um, send them with some stretches home. Uh, we tend to do some stretches to warm them up too because some people are just really, really tight. They needed to do it in here. Uh, we might open them up for the day just so they can get more exercises in that day. Uh, we also do CARS or control articular rotations. And that's basically when your muscle, you're teaching the client to be really, really stiff and that's actually creating really good body awareness by creating stiffness. And as I'm doing, as, as I'm testing my muscles, I'm making the joint work in its own range of motion by individually isolating that joint, working on that joint, and we're gonna go over that more in the in-person session. <laughs> we also do flossing. Uh, flossing is basically kind of like when you picture flossing your teeth, you're taking stuff out of your teeth. So in this case, let's say I have a lacrosse ball. One, of, one example would be a lacrosse ball. I'll put it in between my shoulder blades for like the rhomboids. So between my shoulder blades and the spine, there's a space of muscles. And sometimes that gets really tight, right? We have a lot of problems with clients to do that. So what we'll do is we'll put the lacrosse ball, we'll have clients put pressure into the lacrosse ball in their own body and move up and down with their shoulder. That's creating a sense of flossing. So the muscle is trying to stay pinned with the lacrosse ball while opening and stretching the muscle itself through another part of the muscle that it's attached to. Um, the other way we uh, address some of the issues that clients come in with is distraction or traction, which is basically um, creating, um, how would you say, space the between space. the socket and joint, temporary space where you feel some sort of relief. Um, and that could be just temporary. For the most part, we see that. And sometimes it could last for a, a little bit more than that. Um, is there anything I'm missing on that? Yeah, we're missing a lot, but we'll go over more of it in person. Yeah, for sure. Just make sure you have a pretty good understanding of the muscles of the shoulder and the scap, what connects to them, whether how a ball and socket joint moves, um, issues that we most commonly see, and then, of course, the six ways that it does move. Mm -hmm.